So until now, we have talked about four different examples of cells with four different resting membrane potentials and how these resting membrane potentials may have been produced. Cell one, three and four exist in the body, but there is no cell with a positive resting membrane potential in the body, like the cell number two. The cell simply, as I have thought before, the cell simply does not start to hurry up and produce resting membrane potential at the moment that you start looking at it, but it is already produced and there. So we don't see these events that are leading to the formation of the resting membrane potential. If you want to, you may produce the necessary conditions to start this formation and examine it under the laboratory conditions. But when you look at the living cell, it is already there. So what do we see when we look at a cell, a living cell in real time? We can start with cell number one. I'm going to explain what's happening at the resting condition in cell number one, and then I will move on to cell number three and four, we have, which have similar conditions. So in cell number one, these conditions are present, and resting membrane potential is minus 80 millivolts. What else did we have as information? Cell number one has potassium leak channels. Now we can examine in this cell the forces that act on each of the ions, on potassium and sodium. Let's start with sodium. The chemical force for sodium will be pushing sodium into the cell and the amplitude of it is 61 millivolt. The electrical force will, will be pulling sodium into the cell. Why is it pulling sodium into the cell? Because inner side of the cell is negative and sodium is a positive ion. The electrical force is pulling sodium into the cell with a magnitude of 80 millivolts. So we can see here that there is a big total force of 141 millivolts pulling sodium into the cell. But having a force is not enough. I always say that there are two conditions that are needed. One is a force. We have a big driving force here. But the second one, which is the presence of an ion channel, is not present in this cell. This cell has no channels through which sodium can move into the cell. So although we have a very big force pushing sodium into the cell, there will be no sodium movement. Let's talk about potassium in the same cell. I shall go through the two forces that act on potassium. Potassium chemical force will be pushing potassium out of the cell from high to low concentration and the magnitude of this force is 80 milliwatts. On the other hand, there is an electrical force which is equal to the resting membrane potential and this electrical force being negative on the inner side, is going to pull potassium into the cell. But what is the amplitude of this electrical force? It is 80 millivolts. So, what do we see here? There is two forces of equal amplitude pushing potassium in two different directions. Because they are equal, the net force is going to be, the driving force is going to be zero. Now let us check the conditions that are necessary, the, the two conditions that are necessary 
One condition is the presence of ion channels. Yes, there are ion channels through which potassium can move. But the second condition is the presence of a force. There is no net force. So, in case of potassium, two conditions are not provided at the same time. And there is going to be no net potassium movement either. This time because of another reason. Every now and then, one potassium may go outward and one potassium may go inward accidentally. But here we are talking about a net potassium movement. These accidental movements are by diffusion of potassium, but they are not um, important because they are balancing. And then the net force, the, the, the net movement of potassium is zero in this cell. So we basically say that this cell is at the condition of equilibrium. A condition like this in physiology is called an equilibrium state. This was the explanation of the conditions taking place, of the events taking place during the resting membrane potential in real time in cell one. So actually we can say not much is happening in the cell. Let's continue with the second example. The second example is going to be cell number three and four. Now let us see the events that are taking place in cell three or four when there is the resting membrane potential. So in cell three, we have channels for potassium and we also have channels for sodium. So condition number one is provided, which is the ion channel itself. Let us concentrate on condition number two, which is the driving force. And driving force, as we have already understood, is the sum of electrical and chemical forces. I shall start with the forces acting on sodium ion. Let me enlarge the cell a little so that I can have more space to work on. Yeah. The chemical force of sodium ion is pushing sodium into the cell. This is the direction of it, but what is the magnitude of it? Chemical force of sodium is 61 millivolt. What about the electrical force? Inside of the cell being negative will pull sodium into the cell. And what is the amplitude of it? Its amplitude is the resting membrane potential. Which, what is the resting membrane potential in number, cell number three? It was minus 70 milliwatts. So with 70 milliwatt force, the uh, electrical potential difference will be pulling sodium into the cell. What is the net driving force for sodium? It is approximately 131 milliwatts. With this force through sodium leak channels, sodium will move into the cell. What about potassium? Let's discuss potassium here. I can place minus 70 millivolt above here to have some space. The chemical force for potassium is pushing potassium outward. And what is the amplitude of it? The amplitude of it is equal to the next 
which is 80 millivolts. So chemical force is pushing um, potassium out of the cell by 80 millivolt magnitude. What about the electrical force? The electrical force, the resting membrane potential being negative inside, is going to pull the positively charged potassium ion into the cell with a force of 70 millivolt magnitude. Now we have two forces acting on two different directions. The result of this, the net driving force for potassium is the difference of these two forces and there is a net force pushing potassium in which direction? Outward. By 10 millivolt force, potassium is pushed outward. If this is our driving force, we better represent it with a green arrow as usual. So, with um, 10 millivolt force, potassium is being pushed out of the cell with a 131 millivolt big force sodium is being pushed into the cell. So will the ions move in the direction that they are pushed? Yes, both ions have ion channels. Sodium will move into the cell and potassium will move out of the cell. As we see, the condition in this example of cell number three or four is a bit more complicated. The cell is at rest, but a lot of ions are moving in and out. As we have told before, the movement of ions does not only depend on the driving force, but the channels as well. Now, in this condition, we can write the result in a different way. The total number of sodium ions that move in is equal to driving force for sodium multiplied by the number of ion channels for sodium. This is trying to tell us that the, the driving force will show its effect through the ion channels. This was our basic rule about ion passage through the cell membrane. But if in case of sodium, you have a big driving force with a small number of ion channels. What about the case of potassium? Let's write it here. In case of potassium moving outward, you are going to have a small driving force multiplied by a big number of channels. And when you look at the resting membrane potential, you are going to see that it is constant. So the resting membrane potential is not changing. Although sodium is moving in and potassium moving out, there is no change in the resting membrane potential. This tells us one thing. The total number of potassium going out of the cell is equal to the total number of sodium ions coming in. In other words, the total number of positive charges leaving the cell is equal to the total number of positive charges coming into the cell. So, here we can place a sign showing that 
a small driving force for potassium with a big number of channels is putting outside a number of potassium which is equal to the sodium ions that come into the cell by a big driving force through a small number of ion channels. As we can see, there's a lot happening in this cell. The cell membrane potential, the resting membrane potential is constant, but continuously potassium ions are going out and sodium ions are going in. The cell membrane is constant because the total number of ions moving out and in and the charges they carry are equal. When we are looking at the resting membrane potential, we see a constant membrane potential. But behind this potential, there's a lot happening in this cell. Well, I want to go talk about one last point. What is it? If you remember from the Nernst potential lesson, I have said that the number of ions that move in and out during the electrical events in a cell are not big enough to change the concentration difference. But if a condition like this continues to happen throughout our lives, then I'm afraid an important amount of potassium will be lost lost from the cell and an important amount of sodium will come into the cell. Hmm. Then everything will be, every balance will be lost. So there must be something working to keep the balance or the concentration difference for sodium and potassium. And this is our famous and very important sodium potassium ATPase. It is continuously putting potassium back into the cell and continuously putting sodium out of the cell. Maybe we should make this with blue. Why do we need sodium potassium ATPase in the cell? Just to make sure that these small number of ion movements that take place in a long, long period of time during our life does not affect the concentration differences of sodium and potassium, which was our starting point for producing everything, the nearest potential, the nesting membrane potential, and every force. So this is all I want to explain about resting membrane potential. Thank you for listening. Hope to meet in another lesson in my classroom. Have a wonderful day.